When a man deeply loves you, he will do these key things. Thanks. In this video, we're gonna be revealing what are the things that a man will actually do when he's feeling that sense of deep yearning for you, that he loves you, that he's devoted to you, that he wants to make you happy, and he has this heart open, his deep commitment to you, rather than pulling away, being indifferent, or rejecting you, potentially. So we're gonna avoid that, and we're gonna teach you these principles. So I'm Brody Boyd with Magnetize Your Man, together with my wife, Antia. We've been helping successful women for over 20 years combined to get a loving, long-term, committed relationship. So we're gonna be revealing our principles, maybe some secrets and insights from our own relationship in this training today. So let's go ahead and dive in, and let's start with, what do you believe, Antia, are some of the signs that a man deeply cares for you? Maybe some things that I've shown that you feel deeply cared uh, for and know that I love you. And I'll well, confirm if it's true or not. I actually will say like he texts you, but not necessarily like overly text you. He's going to consistently text you, you know, and he will like almost like immediately text you after the date. And I really want to emphasize that because I hear from so many women, well, when we're in person, he's the best man and he pays so much attention to me. And then as soon as we're like not in person, there's no communication. And I didn't find that to be true with Brody. Like he was actually consistently communicating, not a lot, but like, you know, once a day or every other day and setting up the date to have the phone call where we were then deciding when we're going to meet next. So there was always something rounded to it. To it. it was never, yes, but it's not like, oh, oh, hey, how's your day going? And, you know, and all those like fluffy text messages that are totally meaningless because who cares? And he didn't send me a photo of his dog with like no context. <laughs> and I was supposed to re respond back to that. It really didn't do that. So his texting was a little bit more functional, but I did appreciate that because that meant he was not trying to build this emotional relationship through texting so that then he didn't really need the physical connection anymore. Yeah, well, consistency is a big piece of it because I like to think of the metaphor and the analogy of a dance. So in a dance, a man may have his own tempo, he may have his own rhythm, but he's still maintaining the connection. So he's not gonna let you just drift off and like if he twirls you and just lets you keep twirling off the dance floor, he's gonna maintain the connection, which is about consistency. His tempo might be a little faster, might be a little slower, but he's going to have a rhythm to his interaction with you and his consistency, maintaining that connection. So he's gonna make the effort to reach out to you, to want to set up another date, to want to find out how you're feeling and what's going on with you, which is another big sign that a man deeply loves you but he's gonna maintain that consistency and that commitment, which is also a sign that he's a more masculine man, that he's taking that lead and making sure the relationship is progressing forward in that sense, or at least maintaining a connection in that sense. 100%. In general, like the man will communicate with you. Even he will communicate his emotions and where he stands. And it's almost like if you're questioning and if you're doubting, if you're second guessing, chances are he's probably not that interested because my experiences with Brody is like, I never really, I was never really like guessing and questioning. He was pretty much like, he kept showing up. It was more like me saying, well, how do I like this dynamic and how do I enjoy myself? And actually realizing that I wanted a relationship because when I met Brody, I decided I'm done looking for a boyfriend. I'm looking for a relationship. I'm over it. But then I had to like find out inside of myself that I actually was looking for that. <laughs> wow. You found out. So I revealed to yourself that you actually were ready mm. for deeper reveal. I was like the <laughs> masculine mirror to your feminine expression, your feminine soul. 100%. <laughs> well, but it, and also that's the other piece too, right? When a man is actually deeply um, feeling feelings of love for you is that He's sort of like the secure, anchoring energy. And what I mean by that is it feels like a calm lake. So you can actually feel all of your emotions, like your resistance and your judgment and your fear. And potentially a bitch comes out that you didn't even know was in there or a rage monster. And so you get to feel all these feelings. And he's just going to sit, chill out and just hang out and encourage you to connect with yourself. And not, not like bounce off it and get reactive himself or, or withdraw and tell you that you're too much or you're too complicated. So that's been another experience that I had with you. 
Yeah, well, a big piece of it is if if he really cares about you, he's going to want to make you feel safe to express your emotions. So he's going to ask questions like, how are you feeling? Why are you feeling that way? What do you want? What's coming up for you? How can I make things better? You know, what do you need right now? And holding space, because that's part of the masculine is I'm like wanting to hold space for this beautiful flower to bloom, which is your emotions or your heart or you, which could be coming up in any different form because your emotions are like the weather and the feminine is like the weather. It's going to have sunny, bright, beautiful days like today, or it's going to be a little rainy, a little cloudy, a little, little tsunami here and there. <laughs> but it's in general, it's going to be shifting. Hopefully it's not a tsunami because that would be when you're directing your energy at your man and telling him what to do or just dumping your emotions on him. So there's ways to share your emotions respectfully, but he's going to want to feel your emotions. He's going to call them out. Like, what are you feeling today? What do you want? And helping you to feel safe. Because uh, one story that we have that we could share is when we were first dating and we were uh -oh. going, well, we weren't first dating. This is actually when we were in San, San Francisco and driving up to Mendocino. This was a couple months into us dating each other. And Auntie was in the car and I said, I noticed we were having some issues, some, some argument potentially that we were having. Some tension. Some tension. And I wanted to help her process her emotions. So I said, I'm going to stop the car. And I want you to get out and just scream and let it out. And we were in the forest, so she was okay. So she got out of the car, screamed, let it out. And then I got, I think I might've got out of the car too or something. We took a break and then she got back in the car and then we talked about it. So and then we were more in a, in a clean space because I was helping her to process her emotions. Because sometimes when your emotions are coming up there, again, they're like, could be like a tsunami, like a hurricane, like a tornado. But if a man is really caring for you, he's not going to let you just actually dump those emotions on him, but he's going to help you process the emotions properly. That's pretty advanced though. So most guys are maybe not going to be able to just help you to like scream into a pillow or get out of the car and yell, or he'll get out of the car in a more constructive way, but he'll at least say like, tell me more. What are you feeling? What else? What else is there? And he's going to help like help you get out the emotions in a somewhat healthy way, ideally. And, and you notice me beaming because that's what the feminine does. If the feminine is allowed her full self-expression and her juiciness and her wildness and all the different colors of the rainbow, like that she feels so seen and, 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 and like she blossoms and, and it makes her so happy. And that's, that's what so many of us really want. Like we really don't want anything specific, just that. Well, that's another, yeah, just that. <laughs> just Super easy, that. right? <laughs> In case men are watching, <laughs> like, okay, hold on a second. <laughs> well, that's another good point of when a man deeply cares about you is he's going to want to make you happy and he's going to show care for your heart. And so it's not just about him, you know, buying things for you and doing things for you, but also that he's really wanting you to be deeply fulfilled on like a soul level, right? He's looking to a masculine man, the more masculine he is, the more he's feeling a sense of responsibility in the relationship. Like I got to take care of my woman. I want her to be happy. And if she's not happy, if she's feeling sad or off consistently, like I'm doing a bad job as a man, I got to fix it. Just like in a dance, if a man is leading a woman and she's like frowning the whole time and like, <laughs> I don't want to follow your lead. And he's like, wait, this is weird. I'm like, I must not be doing a good job. I got to fix this. I got to do something better here. But, or he'll check in with her. Like he'll stop, stop the dance. Like what's coming up for you? Like, why are you not happy? But he's going to want to make sure she's happy. She's leading her and she's enjoying the dance. He wants her to be enjoying the music and having fun. And he's providing the structure and the guidance and the leadership to make sure that's the case. So um, if a man really cares about you, he's making sure he is gauging. That kind of goes along with what we mentioned earlier that he's checking in with you, but he's making sure he's keeping a gauge on, is she happy or not? And it's not that you want to take advantage of that and just constantly be criticizing and complaining to him, showing him that he's not doing a good job because that's often not going to make him want to do a better job. That's actually going to make him pull away. So that's why we teach magnetic feminine polarity, magnetic feminine communication in our courses. So you can, act, you can share your feelings and your concerns and your desires and your needs with him in a respectful way that makes him that's also vulnerable, that makes him want to come closer, that makes him want to help and want to make you happy even more. He becomes more devoted in his hero instinct. So that's one thing to look for is, is he showing care for your heart? And is he wanting to step up and fix things when you are sharing that there's an issue respectfully and vulnerably with him that he can solve from his masculine, solve the problem? Yeah, and by the way, as opposed to disappearing or gaslighting you or stonewalling, stonewalling you. Yeah. 
it, or punishing you with some sort of withdrawal. Passive aggression. Passive aggression. Right? Yeah, exactly. Or just like being reactive. I was dating this guy and every time when I said something, he became so reactive as if I like personally offended him. And I was like, no, I'm just expressing how I feel right now. It's not, you know what I mean? It's not like that you have to explode at the same time. <laughs> you know I mean? It's a requirement. <laughs> if the other person's yelling, then I am required to yell also. Yeah, exactly. Otherwise, what kind of relationship is this? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he was also like really passive aggressive. I mean, let's say I was working and I couldn't text him back for, let's say, I don't know, six hours. I don't know. I didn't stop the time. Then he would like literally wait until six hours had passed last time or maybe double the amount to double punish me and to drive home the point what it feels like to wait for six hours for a response. And I'm like, so punishing you. Yeah, exactly. And but also like making assumptions. I'm like, don't you want me to be interdependent? I mean, don't you want me to also have like other areas of my life where I'm like fully focused doing that time and not like look at my phone all the time? And I mean, that's one of the things that I appreciated about you, that you're so true to your purpose. And that even when I, when we lived in Hawaii and I wanted to go out to, for lunch with you or something like that, and you said, I work from nine to five. And I said, well, you're self-employed, so you can do whatever you want. But you actually showed me in that moment that you have this healthy interdependence. But you were also communicating to me, you know, that it was important for you to see me, but at the same time, staying true to yourself and to your purpose. Well, that's a counterintuitive point, which is if a man, like you said, if he deeply cares about you, he's also going to make sure he stays focused on his purpose to some extent, because if he loses sight of his purpose, his meaning in what he's doing with his career, with his ability to provide, to live out his calling, why he's here on the planet, ideally outside of the relationship. You know, David Data talks about a man has to have a purpose outside of the relationship or else the relationship's gonna crumble. And so a man who really cares about you, he's gonna make sure he doesn't lose his connection to his purpose. And it's just like that analogy in the airplanes, the man has to put on their mask first before they put on the mask of the other person. If a man isn't taking care of his fundamental needs and desires as a man, to live out his purpose and fulfill his mission, he's going to be a shell of a man and he's not going to be a great husband, provider, protector, hero for you. He's going to be a shell of a man who will be in his feminine, who will be looking to you to be his mother, who will look for you to protect him and be his protector because he no longer has that core inside of him. He's sacrificed his own masculine instinct to make you happy, which is not good. So if you see a man starting to do that by becoming a people pleaser, a nice guy, as we call it, in the archetypes, then you're likely going to lead to a situation where he's going to be a shell of a man and, and lose his masculine self-esteem and you're not going to be happy ultimately. So you have to watch that in a man and start to share your feelings around that if you notice he's going on that path. And we'll help you with that with respectful feminine communication. But that's definitely a big sign that he's uh, not showing care for you. And the other one that you mentioned is that a man, when he deeply cares about a woman, he's going to also manage his own emotions. So even if he's getting triggered by you, the feminine is the full range of the emotions. The masculine is has emotions, but he's more action-oriented. He's more protection-oriented. He's the leader. He's holding space. He's writing the frame for the dance, like in a tango. And if he's losing that frame, if he's getting overly emotional and letting his emotions take control of him, he's not able to actually be the protector provider hero for you. So if he deeply cares about you, he's going to manage his emotions and he's not going to be totally losing it, whether it's anger, sadness, anxiety, fear, frustration, grief, shame, guilt. He's not going to let these emotions take control over him. He'll process them probably on his own out in nature or just through his work, through his purpose, or he'll maybe he'll talk to, with you about it or get a therapist potentially, but he's going to find ways to manage his emotions so he can still be strong and a leader in the relationship so that he can be your hero and not let himself get into a place where he's fighting you, punishing you, wanting you to mother him, wanting to be the little boy. Like he's going to stop that bad behavior because that's him sacrificing his ability to be the lead in the relationship and not be able to be there for you, not be able to give and provide. So he's going to manage himself in that way and be self-aware and self-disciplined to not be just dumping on you. I think I love that because you're really talking about there's so many different levels of leading. So he's in that moment saying he's like leading himself by him leading himself. He's leading the relationship. And he's actually like leading her heart into trusting him. Because if he was to be reactive, 
if you would have been reactive or if you would have been like, I would have been like, I don't trust this guy. You know, I don't, I don't think he's capable of leading. He's just in it for himself or he doesn't know what he wants or he's upset at himself or he doesn't know how to manage himself or, you know, we women are really good at coming up with lots of reasons. <laughs> It'd be like a man leading a woman in a dance and all of a sudden he's feeling like she's not following his lead very well. So he starts like stomping his feet and throwing a tantrum and walking away from the dance <laughs> or just like yanking her around because he's upset. And then the dance just becomes horrible for everybody involved, <laughs> including the people watching the dance which is what you feel sometimes when you're watching like couples who are fighting out in public or being toxic with each other, that it's like, ooh, that's not nice for anybody involved. <laughs> well, and also, you know, I will say- It doesn't mean you can't work things out, but there's healthier ways to deal with these conflict. We're not saying stuff away the conflict, but there's healthier ways to work it out, especially if he's in his mask and it shows Carrie's gonna do it. But yeah, continue. It's like, you know, I mean, I personally, and I think a lot of women do that. It's like they test the man yeah. I mean, it's more unconscious, it's not like I'm going out today and I'm going to test Brody. But like in the aftermath, you're like, oh, wow, that was actually a test. Like my unconscious or my feminine was actually testing his masculine. And so like it's it's like really important that the man stays like consistent and that he quote unquote passes the test, which really just means I can have my way with you and you're not going to break down when I go into chaos. That's really all what mostly of the tests are all about. That sounds pretty masculine, though. No, that you can, that I cannot have my way with you. So oh, meaning like I that I can't like you manipulate can't you way. or that I can't like kick and scream. And then you're like, OK, fine. Yes, dear. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I'm giving up on my purpose. Is that what you want? Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Abuse me and use me and I'm yeah. your... I'm your tool. Yeah, a guy's not going to let that happen. One of the analogies I used to love back in the day was uh, that the masculine is like this metal fence that the wind is kind of just going through, the feminine is able to go through. So that's part of holding space, right? Where a woman's emotions can come up and you're not getting triggered overly or punishing her or getting turning into a little baby, basically. Like, no, you can't do that. You, what about me? I need help too. I need support too. Of course, a man needs those things and a man's going to lead you ideally from his mature masculine to provide, to be uh, setting the container and the expectations in the relationship to have a harmonious relationship where you're able to get your needs met. He's able to get his needs met. Because again, I love this metaphor, like in a dance, when a man is leading a woman in a dance, he's leading for his pleasure and for her pleasure. He's making sure both is where our needs are being met, which is where the mask in a lot of ways has a lot more work to do in the relationship because he's managing all the whole container so that the woman can just relax. She can just enjoy. She can just follow his lead and listen to the music and twirl and have fun. And he's providing that space and he's providing that structure for that. And if he's not, that's probably a sign, again, that he doesn't really deeply love you because he's allowing himself to be triggered and going into all of his stuff. And we all have trauma. Men have trauma. Women have trauma. We all have wounds. If a man deeply cares about you, he's going to be willing to either, in some ways, bypass those traumas or integrate those traumas, work through those traumas so that he's not becoming a puddle <laughs> of a man. Totally. He's collapsing, right? They use that language in psychology. If he's collapsing, that's not a sign that he's really caring for you because he's allowing himself to get to that point. Totally. Or that he becomes like this minefield. So you have to walk on the eggshells mm -hmm. because every time when you say something, it upsets him. Or if you don't say something, it upsets him. And you know what I mean? And oh, it gets him sad. And you know, that this, this whole codependent uh, relationship dynamic is born, right? And so, but people don't talk about like that you have to be willing to walk through the sort of the discomfort of like both individuals in a relationship setting their own boundaries. That that's actually what builds the trust. That also what leads to an interdependent relationship. Yeah, so that's actually another good point is that if a man really cares about you deeply, he is going to set boundaries with himself primarily to protect you from his, like we talked about, if he does have trauma or if he does have demons, or things that are unhealthy habits, addictive patterns, he's going to make that extra effort to set boundaries with himself to protect you from him in some ways, where if he's feeling like he could do something potentially that could hurt you or emotionally, physically, in any way, he's going to stop himself from that and do that extra effort. Yeah. And I mean, we even have like 
friends in our own circle where he was definitely setting boundaries and I was around more physical, but like he was setting boundaries for himself because he knew at which level he would get attracted to such a level that it would lead to the next step. And so he knew when he had to leave, went on dates. So it can look many different ways, right? It's like there is sort of this, this adoration and this respect for the relationship and for actually wanting this to be something long term like something to invest in. The masculine's deepest desires and needs in a relationship is to be respected and trusted. And the feminine's deepest needs in a relationship is to be adored and cherished. So if a man really cares about you, he's also going to go the extra effort and put in his love into the relationship. Like, I want to care for you. And he's going to put in his love through many different ways, through attention, through his presence, through physical affection, holding you, kissing you. We call it schnuckling. But... Uh, <laughs> having sex. Uh, he's going to also give you his adoration and care through, you know, if you're sick, bringing you things, he may surprise you with compliments, with all kinds of things, all different ways he can give his love and affection. But I think primarily the way the masculine man will show his love and affection is simply through his attention and his care by, we talked about checking consistently, but he's going to give you his full attention when you're talking, be present with you, which is also involves him not thinking about other things when he's with you, but being purely focused on you and the relationship and that connection, like in a dance, because if, if a man is a poor lead in a dance, he's going to be distracted in his own mind by other things. And he's going to be causing himself to trip up, causing you to trip up. He's going to be bumping into things. You're going to be bumping into things. You'll lose the connection. So that's a big part of being in the masculine lead that shows he has care for you is that he's focused, he's attentive, he's present, he's lasered in to make sure particularly that your heart is happy and cared for. So a lot of these things link together. 100%. And, you know, the other piece also is that he's invested. And what I mean by that is, you know, he asks you questions about your life when you're on a date. Like he's kind of follows along the journey. He's like, so then, and then what happened? And you saw your grandma and then, you know, is she feeling better? And he follows up. He knows that you have an important work meeting. And so that's what I feel like. There's sort of like this investment there, right? There's some sort of like emotional weight or like an anchor in a positive way where they're not just going to be, you know, out of sight, out of mind, but they actually... Investment is really the best word that I can think of. Yeah, investing and invested where he is putting his investment into the relationship as far as his time, energy, money, potentially through things like solving problems for you, giving advice, wanting to be available when you need his help, being the hero. And, you know, when somebody is has an investment and they've invested, for example, like in the stock market or into real estate or all these different investments, what are they doing with their investments? Well, they're usually checking in on them often to see how they're doing. They are protecting them. They're making sure they don't lose their investment. So they're taking care of the property or they're watching the, the news and they're making adjustments as needed, but they are showing care for that investment and they are prioritizing that investment and they are doing things to also as much as they can, if it's a, their own business, if it's a property, if it's some other form of investment, they're usually also putting more investment into it. They're upgrading it. They are improving it. They are showing they're proud of it often too. They'll show the world like, hey, this is my investment. This is my thing in my life that I love and I care about and I put a lot of energy into and it is and it has my full attention, my full consistency and my full awareness and adoration and cherishment. 100%. And I think how it shows up is really how it showed up for you. You know, you're asking me questions, you know, where are you going tonight? Or who was this guy who picked you up last night? No, first you're like, who was this friend who picked you up last night? And then you ask if it was a guy. And so, but again, there's sort of this investment, right? Like you care. You're not just like, whatever, live your life. Like you win some, you lose some, laissez-faire. But you actually can't. And when it's so many other moments, like just asking me about my work projects and just again, just like really being, being invested you know, and then obviously we end up actually doing our business together. Yeah. And then the last piece with that is, of course, commitment. If a man is really invested, he's going to be signing that paper, right? He's signing off on the documents to purchase the home or to buy the stocks or to get married or to be in an exclusive relationship. Like he's making that commitment because it's important to him because it's an investment and he's investing into you as a, probably the deepest ultimate sign that a man truly cares for you. So, And maybe that may be interesting for the women to hear your whole process, because when you committed to me, you first said, you know, you need to look into your heart and then come back to me. And you came back the next day and you said, 
I feel feelings of love for you. I, or I don't want you to date other guys. I, I think you said it the day before. So what's yeah, well, kind of he... happening in the man's mind and soul and heart that makes them commit or that this process that leads them to commit? Yeah, he checks in with himself and he recognizes that he has, that he values his investment. He values his woman, you know, he's, that's what I was. I was like checking in and I realized when I saw the possibility that you could be dating other guys, I was like, I don't like that. I value this connection. I value this relationship. I value this woman. I don't want to lose her. So then I want to be exclusive or however the conversation went. Like, I don't, I don't want you to see other guys. And so that was it. And then that was similar also with me deciding to propose, which is like, I can't imagine my life not having you in it. So I want to commit to that. I don't want to lose this from my life or I just can't even imagine not having it in my life. So that's just something I want to commit to. This is something I'm, I'm invested in and I, I desire and I want for long term. So yeah, so was, uh, that's the key. That's what you want to look for. And that's what you want to recognize in your man is, is he actually valuing me? Is he valuing our connection? Is he prioritizing it? Or is he just making it an option? Is he making you an option? That's not a good sign. So it's one thing we help you with and we'll continue to go deeper in helping you actually have a man want to commit, want to devote himself to you, want to make you a priority and have a loving, long-term committed relationship that lasts for life because he desires you because he may even obsess over you. So if you want to get that, if you want to take the next steps in how to learn the principles of magnetic feminine polarity, magnetic feminine communication to actually draw men into deeper relationship with you and deeper love with you, take our free quiz by going to click the link in the description or comments below this video, this training, or you can go to our special website, magnetizeyourman.com. Much love. Hope this was helpful. And we look forward to talking to you more very soon. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.